Welcome back to the Physique Development Podcast. Today, we have an extremely special guest that I'm so excited to finally announce to you is our newest member of Team PD, Coach Mia Ferguson. Mia graduated from the University of Wisconsin, River Falls with an exercise sports science degree. She also has her ASCM as an exercise physiologist, and she has her CPT through ACE. She's been a PD client for about three years now, and next month, she'll be finishing up her her functional nutrition certification. She is an incredible human being, a competitor, and a kick-ass coach. Why else would we bring her on the team? So let's get into meeting and learning all about Mia. As of today, October 9th, you can now apply to work with Mia. So I will have all of the links that you need below or in the show notes, and we'll catch you on the inside. Well, thank you, Sue, for that incredible intro. I'm super, super excited to be here. I am so jazzed. This has been a long time coming. <laughs> I was actually talking to the other coaches when I told them that we are onboarding you and talked about the onboarding process and what the interviews had looked like coming into it. And they were giggling and saying that I really put you through the ringer because <laughs> we didn't know how to go through the interview process as well starting off. I mean, we were just learning along the way. And for Katie, we literally were just like, how would it feel to be a coach? All right, cool. <laughs> Welcome to the team. And that's kind of how things went. And thankfully, it has worked out wonderfully because she's awesome. But I am so glad that we were able to go through that process with you uh, and be able to bring you on board. Yeah, well, honestly, it was an enjoyable process on my end just to get to really show my strength and, and show what I can do as a coach. And I commend you guys for just having such a thorough process to make sure that your clients are so well taken care of. That is a, a top, top goal quality. And <laughs> you definitely fit into that. I know how deeply you care about your clients. I know how deeply you care about your own health. It shines through you truly. And that's why it really was an easy decision once you did just fly through everything <laughs> and check every box to bring you on board. And it's also just so cool bringing on yet another PD client onto the <laughs> team that has seemed to be a recurring theme. So it is even more special to have you here because of that. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and as each coach, we have had their own spotlight episode and really just being able to showcase why we did hire you because you are so incredible. But I love to be able to hear about the fitness journey and what that process looked like because I also say people don't just buy coaching. They buy coaches. They want to connect to the person and hear about the person. And I'm just a little bit nosy as well as a human being. So <laughs> I would want to know what's this new girl? What What's she add into Team PD? Where'd she come from? I need to know the deets. So I would love to be able to hear a little bit about how you got got into fitness and what that looked like in your life. Yeah. So my fitness journey really was founded on the basis of knowledge and the need for knowledge. And that really came from the fact that from ages 14 to 17, I did struggle with a pretty severe eating disorder. And upon recovering from that, it was something where I was able to get out of such a really dark place because I was able to educate myself. I, at my lowest low, really looked at myself in the mirror and was like, hey, this isn't cutting it. You're not cutting it. And you need to do something different because getting smaller and doing more and more and more to make yourself smaller isn't doing anything positive for you. It's not getting you to the place where you really want to be. And so upon researching things and really just finding what I could about how do I get out of this bad place, I was able to find weight training. And as an athlete my whole life, who then wasn't allowed to do any sort of cardiovascular exercise, it was something where weight training really saved me. It showed me the power of getting strong. It showed me the need for really fueling my body in order to gain muscle. And it showed me, you know, just how nutrition and quality exercise was super, super important. And through that, it really created such a ripple effect into every other area of my life. With how you said you really took it upon yourself to, to learn and dive into education and knowledge, how'd you do that when it was something so new to you? When I first started researching and trying to learn about nutrition and fitness and everything of that sort, um, I dove into podcasts actually and <laughs> um, and YouTube and uh, some books here and there. But you know, the YouTube and podcast space was pretty up and coming. I started this whole thing when I was around seventeen, um, so that was something where 
you know, I just absorbed all of the knowledge that I possibly could. And luckily I did fall into the more positive side of fitness. I found people like uh, Lane Norton and was able to learn about the emerging research around reverse dieting and saw a lot of competitors actually who were coming out of shows and realized, hmm, that looks a lot like what I need to do coming from such a low food intake place to getting myself back up to a place that is more maintainable. And I was able to actually take myself through a reverse diet for the most part and um, get into a pretty good spot, but not the best spot that I could be in, which would kind of take me into hiring my first coach and again, going into um, learning more and more throughout having a coach and investing in that knowledge as a whole. Now to go back a little bit to you mentioning the eating disorder, what did that present like in your life when it came to the way that you talked about yourself or how you were pouring into yourself? In terms of pouring into myself, I, I really wasn't in any sort of positive way. Um, it was something where it was constant negative self-talk. I would put myself down consistently, said that I would never be able to do things, never be able to be the person that I really wanted to be unless I was able to, you know, just do more and more to be the smallest version of myself. Um, I really, really did try to pull that worth from the external. And I saw everyone around me who in my perception was smaller and looked better than me. And I wanted to be like them because they were therefore more valuable than I was. Um, and that sort of self-talk talk and that language was what really propelled me towards that really dark place that I found myself in. Um, I would argue with everyone around me. Obviously, I was really irritable during this time. It was something where I just wasn't a pleasant person to be around. Um, someone who was formerly a really talented varsity level swimmer, I could barely make it across the pool without getting winded. And it was just something that really ultimately was just not a great way to treat myself. You also mentioned that you decided as an athlete that since you couldn't do cardio, that's when you would get into training. And you also just mentioned of being a varsity level athlete and then getting to the point that you couldn't swim a lap across the pool. What was the time frame difference between this and what even got you to the spot to know, hey, lifting does need to be the outlet here instead of any other modality of fitness? So as much as it felt like a really long time when I was in it, it actually happened fairly rapidly. So when I was around 14, I really started restricting my food intake. And, um, you know, by the time that next swim season came around, say, seven or eight months later, um, I was in a really, really bad spot. And I would, you know, go to practices. I would muscle my way through. But, you know, there was a couple of times where I left just absolutely crawling out of that swim practice because I did not have the nutrition to really support me within that. And that was something that was very demoralizing to me as a former athlete to not even be able to show up for my team in the way that I really wanted to. As we were talking a little bit earlier today, you talked about your parents being triathletes and just a lot of athletes in your family in general. Now, with being a triathlete, that is a lot of cardiovascular-based endurance. And as we talked about <laughs> swimming, that's definitely also included in being a triathlete. But just in general, it is very demanding. So had you ever lifted weights before you really got into lifting? So funny story, actually, uh, I had. And when I was in high school, in addition to swimming in the off season, I would play water polo. And for some of our water polo preseason practices, we would go in and we would do weight training sessions with the high school weightlifting coach. And I hated every single second of it. <laughs> um, I would absolutely just shy away whenever anyone would try to put a barbell on my back. And um, at the beginning of it all, the weightlifting coach actually had me just squatting the bar because he was like, there's no way that this girl can lift more than that, you know? And so coming out of swimming and, and getting into weight training there, that was something where I had only really had that negative experience, right? And so I saw everyone doing weight training online. And my thought was, this is the only way that I can gain weight and still look semi good. And that's how it started. And then I started to find out, huh, this is kind of fun. I kind of like being strong. I kind of like, you know, really feeling powerful. And it just kind of snowballed from there. 
it just puts the the largest smile on my face because it it was a similar way that I kind of came into lifting where I was always wanting to be smaller because I felt like I was the the bigger friend and part of that was just because everyone around me was petite as far as their height more than anything and really not understanding how much that can change what your scale weight is so someone who's like 5 inches shorter than me can be quite a bit lighter than me and it looks so different on their body. Body. So I just remember always wanting to be smaller and having these smaller numbers on the scale. And when I got into lifting, it was because I finally found a physique where I admired how the physique looked. And I thought, okay, if I can go like this and if I can do this, then great. But I hadn't linked the two together quite yet. So I was under eating and exercising and I was still learning how to truly exercise because coming from you just try to burn as many calories as possible versus I'm I'm going in there and that's not my goal really. I, I actually you could ask me right now when's the last time I even looked at what the calorie burn was for any of my workouts and I couldn't quite tell you. So being able to kind of have that transition I think is so powerful and that's something where I think everyone on team physique development is so incredibly passionate about is what lifting can do for your life and being able to take care of yourself and there's always a vehicle to get you to where something is and fitness can be something that that allows you to see how truly capable you are and go for just different goals. Because when you are trying to lose weight, there is an aspect of a certain amount of calories in versus out. But if you have more muscle on your body, you burn more calories. If you are able to lift and change the type of lifting that you are doing, you can really get after some good caloric burn. And that's not obviously the only reason to do it, but it only makes sense of why not get some more muscle on my body so I don't have to starve myself. Oh, exactly. 100%. And it was something where, you know, I grew up in Southern California um, and I was in a sport like swimming where, you know, you're in very, very tight swimsuits and everybody around me is is small. And, you know, we go to the beach all the time and everything of that sort. My body was constantly on display. And so it was something where, you know, even the act of eating larger meals was really scary because of the fact that you're in a swimsuit and therefore you look bloated and, you know, anything of that sort. All of those thoughts always ran through my head. And so when I was able to flip that switch to, hey, when I have more muscle on my frame, when I am fueling the muscle that I have, I'm able to look good and eat really good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that was something that was super, super powerful for me to just be able to really step into, I am fueling my body so that I'm able to live in a physique that I love for the long term. And if anyone who didn't do a swim team, first, about mm, 10 plus years ago, the swimsuits we're not as good as they are now. <laughs> I need to, to mention that because now there's a lot of very nice fabric and material and cut to suits. And I even see for like practice suits for swimming, much more uh, just nicer on your physique. They, they do a little bit better job. Whereas the swimsuits that we had for swim team were not that great. And depending on what type of competitive swim team that you did, if you had the um, like longer suits and stuff, how tight that was. And again, how much it encouraged you to just be smaller. Because I can tell you, like I grew up living in a one piece swimsuit. And even with a one piece where my stomach is covered, I still had so much, especially about my legs and my butt, because it was always on display. And it was very difficult to kind of get past that because you're surrounded by people smaller than you. And so I love that you talk about also seeing people do it on Instagram or watching people and seeing these physiques because sometimes you just need to see that it's possible or there's something else to surround yourself with to notice that you can make a change in your life. And I love that you were able to even recognize that you could get to that spot instead of just this is what things have to be like. Yeah, absolutely. If you are a bikini competitor who has competed well at the regional stage or at the national stage and not placed how you wanted, I would love the opportunity to work with you. If you would inquire via the link in the description box, that would be the first step. And from there, we'll get a call scheduled and I look forward to speaking with you. 
You mentioned learning about things a little bit more and reverse dieting yourself, and that led to hiring your first coach. So what did that process look like to even know you needed to hire a coach as well as getting that first coach hired? Yeah. So I would reverse myself up to, I think around 2,200 calories. And in my head, um, you know, my weight wasn't going up. I was really struggling with progression in the gym, but I was like, there's no way that this is a food thing. There's no way that I have to eat more than this. This is a ton of food for me at my size. I don't have to eat more than 2,200 calories. I'm going to hire a coach so that she can tell me that I'm correct and that I do (laughs) not have to eat more than this. And so I hired her and guess what? She told me I was wrong. And um, going into that, backtracking a little bit, hiring a coach was a, a massive investment for me. It was something where I you know, at the time was 17 years old. I didn't really have money and I didn't have a job. And so being a 17 year old with no money and no job, I went out and after my inquiry call with my coach, asked the first restaurant that I could find if they needed anyone to work (laughs) and they hired me as a server. So with $300 in my bank account, I spent just about every penny and um, with my brand new job was able to continue to pay my coach and we just kind of went from there. Another parallel that I've seen in my own story is when I hired my first coach, I I literally spent almost every cent that I had. And I was also in college at the time, and I knew that I didn't have enough accountability just by myself. I knew that because I was a people pleaser, if someone asked me to go do something, asked me to go out, I would go ahead and say yes. I I just wanted people to like me and I would do whatever was going to do that. So holding my own and deciding something completely for myself for my own benefit was not something that I was going to do, but I so desperately wanted to do that. And I literally spent all of my money because I was like, if I have no money, I now can't go out. And I can tell people I have no money and I really don't and that I spent it on this thing and it's going to be a great excuse for me to not have to do anything. And I'm going to be able to really dive into this because I want to, but I know I can't do it alone. And that was such a special moment for me to go all in on something, but more than anything, all in on myself and really being able to decide this is a change I want to make. And I didn't know everything that I was doing at that time, obviously, why I was hiring some help. But a big part of it came from just wanting to have someone along for the ride because I knew that just alone, I wasn't going to be able to accomplish it. And so being able to have that person, whether it was an excuse or whether it was telling me and validating something that I was doing or the fact of having direction and knowing that I was on a better path, that I was going to minimize the amount of mistakes I would make along the way was so, so incredible. So I love that you just invested in yourself. You said, you know what, I'm going to make this work and I'm going to go out there. I'm going to get the job and this is not something that is going to stop me. I'm going to propel myself. Yeah, exactly. When you make that big of an investment, when you have that much at stake for yourself, you are not giving yourself that out, right? You can't quit on yourself then because you really, again, don't have another option. At that point, it was something that I just decided I was going to do. That switch flipped and I was in. Once you got started with coaching, she told you that you did need to eat more. But what did the next few months look like? So the next few months were honestly a lot of me just trying to not backtrack um, and got through that and ultimately really was feeling good about my relationship with food and where I was and fitness as a whole. I enjoyed learning so, so much and loved working with her. And through that process, I had ended up meeting quite a few friends in the fitness industry, which was awesome. Um, Some of those friends were both friends of myself and my coach. And through that, um, one of them was competing in a bodybuilding show in San Diego where I grew up, where I was living at the time. And when she came to compete in that bodybuilding show, I decided that I was going to go meet her in person for the first time. I was going to watch her compete. Uh, She was in the figure category, but before she went on, the bikini girls went on, which is not normal for most (laughs) of us. Yeah, normally they're last. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But um, when those bikini girlies came on, I saw them and I was like, I, I want to do that. Like, I want to do that so badly. And I knew because I had known competitors what it took to go through a prep. And I kept that secret for about another month before telling my coach because I 
thought I was going to be judged for, you know, someone who had come from a background of having an eating disorder to wanting to go into competing. And, and the, that was very common to judge people who made that transition. But in my frame of mind, it really was something of like, if I can go through a prep and still come out of it with a good relationship with food, I have conquered every single demon that was once inside of me telling me that I needed to be smaller. And so I ended up coming to that realization, telling my coach, and my coach was nothing but supportive and was like, absolutely, I think you can definitely do this. We need more muscle first, but you can do this. And I don't coach competitors, but I will help you find a coach. When that time comes, I will pass you off and I will support you wholeheartedly when you step on that stage. Did you have any doubt about if you could actually finish a competition or be able to excel in that? When I was in the process of growing muscle prior to starting a prep, I had some doubts in the back of my mind. I was, you know, doubting myself. I was like, is this really the best thing for me? But about six months before I actually entered a prep, that's when I really was like, I don't think that I have anything in me that is going to prevent me from doing really freaking well at this and being extremely passionate about where I'm going with it. And that was about the time when I decided I was going to start inquiring with competition coaches to really get the ball rolling and figure out when I was going to prep that following year. That was actually when I um, inquired with Alex for the first time. Um, and I say for the first time because it was six months prior to actually hopping on board, which is something that I do frequently is do things way ahead of time, <laughs> which is a good and a bad quality sometimes. But um, with this, I inquired with Alex first, and it was the first name that I brought up to my current coach, just asking her about you know what competition coaches she would recommend, uh, who she thought would be the best fit for me. And as soon as I had said Alex Bush, she was like, yep, I think you would be a great fit for physique development. And I think that you would have a wonderful, wonderful time competing with them. And so I knew in my heart that that was going to be my choice. I still inquired far and wide, and I never felt the care for the process that I did when I was inquiring with PD. And so that is ultimately the decision that I made. And we really could not be happier that it all, <laughs> all hammered out that way. It has been truly such a pleasure to know you since the beginning of your journey with physique development. Obviously, I have been filled in on the rest <laughs> of your journey. But from that time, I, I remember when you started with Alex, and I remember you going through your first prep and then your next prep. And it's just been so I, it's just been really special. I, and I, I was getting emotional about this. I literally cried um, on the podcast with Katie talking about how great she is. But I had put together photo collages of the coaches for physique development and uh, like their first headshot, second, third, fourth headshot. And it was just so cool to see all of the time that has passed and how much they've all grown. And I was looking at pictures the other day, putting together something for you and seeing some of those like starting pictures to where things are now. And it really does make me emotional because you have just fought so much, not only within competing, but just for your health day and time again and again. And not like the, the eating disorder, it doesn't feel like it ever came up again. Um, and it didn't ever seem like it was ever a conversation. And when I say of fighting through things with your health, you've had other things go on hormonally and things that aren't easy to deal with. And I know any client that is going through a hormonal journey, one of the first things I say is this is going to take time and it's going to be hard and it's going to feel tedious and it's going to be frustrating, but like you have to know what you're in it for. And you've been in it for that. And you have fought so much each time to show up. And then you fought for your education, not only from the very beginning of going out there and deciding, if I can't do this, I got to figure it out a different way. Uh, so really being able to fight for that, but just continue to improve your craft as a coach. Because when you first started coaching, I uh, just thankfully got to be a really small part of that um, and just be able to see you grow from that position to your following position to now being able to be in this position. I, I really wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, so I am just... I, I'm, I'm a little emotional and anyone who <laughs> listens to this, I've like cried on my solo episodes and everything, but it's freaking not weak to cry. You're just being a big softo and I'll, I'll take that for sure. <laughs> well, I get freaking emotional about it too, because I, way back when 
we did have that first interaction within the beginning of my coaching journey, I didn't see myself being here. And I had mentioned something to Alex about this in my check-in after I realized that I was going to be a part of PD of just, I don't think that I would have believed in myself even a couple months back to even apply for the position, you know? And now I am so wholeheartedly invested in the mission of this company and so passionate about what we do here that I have to pinch myself sometimes when I, when I say it. I when I got my physique development email, I started crying. Just <laughs> random moments where I'm like, oh my goodness, this is my life. This is my dream job. And I'm like, this is now going to be my reality and my career. And it's just so awesome to have a company exist that I feel this aligned with. Well, she's trying to get me to cry again. She <laughs> she's she's thinking about it. Uh, well, that went off on a little tangent, but it was a great one, and I'm glad that we did. Uh, and we will talk a little bit more about how people can, you know, hear some more from Mia in general and her physique development email address, which, if you didn't know, all of ours are our first name at physiquedevelopment.com. <laughs> so you can catch her, Mia, at physiquedevelopment.com. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Getting a little bit back, we're going to rewind a little bit. You got started with Alex. You got started with your first show. So what did that first show or that first prep really look like? So that first prep, honestly, I mean, the prep process itself was a dream. And for anyone who doesn't know me personally, which is probably most people, <laughs> um, but I, I love the process of prep. I pretty much live my life like I am in prep. With the exception of in the off season, if like one of my loved ones wants to do, some, do something, I'll go do that with them. But I love being on it. I love making my meals, doing my training and just everything to the upteenth degree. Um, but we did have some hangups during my prep. Uh, three weeks out from my first show, my dad ended up getting diagnosed with colon cancer. Uh, it was stage four when it was diagnosed. And it was a shock to everyone. No one had any idea. Um, the only symptoms he had we thought were gallstones. And so I was in the midst of trying to come up with dietary and lifestyle interventions for gallstones when I got a call that he was diagnosed with stage four cancer. And I was in shock, honestly. I, I, you're going to make me <laughs> <laughs> Sadly, I kind of know what that feeling is like as those who are regularly listening to the podcast know what's going on with my dad right now. So not to take away from your emotion, I just get a little bit emotional because knowing what the experience of prep is like and knowing being three weeks out <laughs> and getting that kind of news, it would make sense for anyone to stop and to not compete. And you would have basically gotten a free pass to spiral. and. They would have all been understood, and you didn't, or I'll spoil, you didn't. I so did not. <laughs> what did that look like? So um, for some context, my show that I was three weeks out from was in Minneapolis. I was living in Wisconsin at the time, so it was a very close show. I had already registered, and being three weeks out, I was like, you know what? I'm going to freaking do this thing because – my dad is one of the main reasons that I am an athlete. He raised me to never quit. Um, if we started a season within sports, we were not allowed to quit that season until it was over. And I just had his voice in the back of my head every time I wanted to quit volleyball or cross country that they <laughs> tricked me into being a part of, just saying, you are not allowed to quit on your team until you're done. And I had so many people around me, friends, I mean, my family themselves, Alex, you, um, everyone who was so invested in my process. I was like, I owe it to everybody to at least do this show. And after I got on this show or on that stage and, you know, felt what it felt like to be up there, I felt like I belonged. I, I knew that I was going to do it again. Um and so I, I had called my parents after the show. They wanted to hear how it went. And my dad had brought up that Hannah, one of my friends who was also in prep at the same time, was doing a show in San Diego. He's like, when is that show? Are you going to come? And I was like, well, why don't I just do the show? <laughs> and they were so excited to have something else to focus on for the next few months rather than what was happening in our lives because we really didn't know how to handle it. And so – not only for me, but for everyone else, having my prep to focus on was a weirdly amazing distraction. And fitness has always been my safe space. 
But even more so in that time, I needed that. And so the remainder of my season really became just something for me and my family both to to really focus on and just have that small light as we were going through what we were going through. I think being busy is such an underrated thing (laughs) when it comes to taking your mind off of things. And I I think a lot of people want to understand that being something to focus on. And uh, people can judge people for grieving a certain way. But I can definitely say that there has been a lot of times that I've been going through preps and something really terrible has happened. And it does give me just something to put my focus on and to pour in. And like you talked about of he told you not to quit. You were able to honor him through that process focus on something else where he would probably not want you guys all sitting around crying. He would want you (laughs) living your life. And as hard as that is to feel sometimes where it's like, no, I should be there and I should be sad about this. And how can I be happy in these times? It it truly is of like, he would probably be like, Mia, why are you sitting around being sad? Like, it doesn't, it's not going to help anything. Go live your life. And so you were able to honor him even more by that and just pour into yourself so much and believe in yourself and not letting it be something of, oh, I didn't get to get on stage. And I guess that's just something that's not going to, I'm not going to be able to do that. That could have easily gone that way. Uh, But you knew what you had worked for, what you were capable of, and what was also going to allow you to feel the best in the long run. uh, Because sometimes it can be pretty easy to get swept, swept up in emotions of something that feels like it's the end of the world, but being able to look more of the long run of how do I really want to feel at the end of this? And and you just showed up for that so fearlessly. Well, thank you. And yeah, it was something where my dad has always and still does (laughs) believe in me more than anyone, whether it was my career, whether it was fitness, anything of the sort, he truly, truly believed in what I was capable of. And his strength through treatment, through fighting for us, for me, my mom and my sister, was something that is to this day my biggest inspiration to just really show up for yourself and realize that you can do the hardest shit in the world and you're going to come out of it on the other side. Will you show that and you embody that, as I have mentioned before, and just it is extremely admirable. And let's not forget talking about Mia's season because Mia walked away with let's let's list them all out. You got your true novice win, mm-hmm. the true novice overall, the novice uh, open class win, the novice overall, your open open class win, and the open overall? Yeah. Yeah. She says just, <laughs> yeah, okay. That that just cannot be unstated <laughs> because not only is that Im- majorly impressive in general, but also knowing the story of what you worked through in that instance. Uh, and also just remembering that day of just how joyful you were and you were such a light to everyone that was there. We actually had like a squad there with PD and it was really cool. That was one of the first shows that we had sponsored. And so our our names were on the banners and everything. And you you really were just such a light and you had so much self-belief. And I just remember going into it and just seeing that really portrayed. So, so freaking cool. But after that season, so you're in Wisconsin, which GPG uh, at the time, but what happened after you wrapped up that season? Well, thank you, Sue. <laughs> but um, so first thing that I'll mention that happened after that season is after that show day, actually, where I did win the overall in Indiana, um, not only am I here, obviously, with Team VD, but um, one of my very best friends I met on that day, who was oh. also a member of PD, <laughs> which um, is just a cool connection of the power of being part of something that is truly, truly awesome. But in my own personal life, um, moving towards just, you know, after prep and everything of that sort, I really went and dove into school and just getting my degree and coming out of that um, as soon as I I could so that I could go home and and help out with my dad and things of the sort there. Um, I did, as Sue kind of alluded to earlier, run into some hormonal issues down the road that we have now traced back all the way to my eating disorder. That was something that was um, kind of lingering for a, a good while. But through those issues, it really taught me a lot. And it's something that I'm extremely passionate about now of being able to help women who are in a similar position um, get out of that position. And so I really 
Do you think that it was another example of the hard things that you go through come out on the other side to be a way that you can help people? A hundred percent. So within getting my degree, I ended up graduating half a year early, which was um, great news because my dad had always said that he really just wanted to see me graduate. And it was something where I had originally planned to potentially go back to San Diego um, to help out with his care and everything of that sort uh, and spend time with him after I graduated. However, um, the plan was also for me to have a spot in Austin so that ultimately I could end up there. Um, and so in moving into that primary spot in Austin and planning to do the half California, half Austin thing, um, my dad got put on hospice pretty much as soon as I unpacked my last box. And I ended up going back to California to say my goodbyes um, and go through that whole process, which was extremely, extremely hard. Um, but I – you know, I came out the other side with the knowledge that my dad wanted me to, again, live my freaking life to the fullest and just become the best version of myself. And so when I went back to Austin, that's what I did. Um, I will say that from the months of January to where I sit now in September has been the most self-growth that I have experienced in my entire life, not only from the passing of my dad, um, but just from the immense work that I've put in, the incredible friend group that I've been a part of since moving to Austin and just everything that I've opened my mind to because of the fact that, you know, I know that my dad would have wanted me to continue to show up and take risks and be the best version of myself. I have no doubt that he wanted that for you. And I have no doubt that you really have accomplished that for him. And I know that you'll continue to. And I think it's so special to have those things that drive you and those moments that uh, it's easy to let yourself go or not believe in yourself of knowing you have that deep rooted belief from someone else and just being able to, to use that to continue to pour. Yeah, exactly. So I know the timeline, if you're following along, might be a <laughs> tiny bit confusing because I kind of talked about Mia coaching and then we jumped back to <laughs> a few other things. But when it came to you becoming a coach, what did that look like? What did that decision really – when did you come to that decision? Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. So I had known that I wanted to be a coach since my sophomore year of college. Um, during my sophomore year of college, I had the opportunity to work with a cool company for group coaching. And so that was something that was kind of my gateway into the coaching industry. And upon going through the hormonal issues that I kind of alluded to, that was something that really was a catalyst for me wanting to work more with people one-on-one -on -one and dig in depth on some of you know, the deeper issues that group coaching couldn't cover. And so with that, when I graduated from college, it was something where I went into a one-on-one um, -on -one coaching setting. And then the past couple months was presented with the opportunity to work with PD and, you know, of course, jumped right into wanting that more than anything in the entire world and putting everything in to um, stepping into that position. But then in terms of Coaching as a whole, my journey was really founded on knowledge, and my first coach changed my entire life. My first coach was someone who saw so much potential in me and others, and her seeing potential in me kept me from being stuck. And just for a little bit of context, I, I will give on that. Um, I My other large loss this year was my first coach. Um, she passed away in July. And that was something that was really hard for me because she she was in Austin as well. So we had become great friends since I had moved there. Um, but her passing was really such a catalyst to me to, you know, be the best coach that I could possibly be again. Because like I said, she changed my life through her work. And it's so incredible that at such a young age, she had that level of impact. And it's an absolute inspiration and a freaking honor to get to follow in the footsteps of that. 
Lexi is truly such a special person and I am I'm so thankful for like her really just first being able to say like hey I don't co- coach competition clients <laughs> and still caring so much about your journey and your health along the way wanting to make sure that you got the best fit and I was so thankful to have already had a relationship with Lexi uh, beforehand and just every time I got to see her it was it was so incredible to to do so and I know that we just had so much respect for each other within the industry and uh, we've been able to work with also Melissa um, who was her um, um, co-owner or co-partner uh, within the the team that they own and just being able to have so many positive experiences with with her and them as a whole. And so when it was something that you did ask her and she said that it was great, um, I knew that if it was coming from Lexi, it was it was also going to be great. So um, it, it's really special to see the impact that she had. Of course, we all wish it didn't come to this for this to be where we talk about the impact more publicly. But I, I think it is so special. And there are so many coaches or mentors along the way or just people that poured into me that, that really did save my life life or that made such an impact that made me want to make that change in others. And like I mentioned earlier of just your your ability to care so much and you want to really give someone the highest quality that you can give, it, it is so admirable. And it's a reason that we trust you to be a part and we want you to be a part of physique development. Um, it's a reason that we have been slower in the process to, to get other coaches on board because that really matters to us of the quality of what someone is getting when they join the team. And so when it comes to what type of clients you coach or how you coach clients, what does that look like for you? So for me, I've learned through the years that it's best to coach the person and not necessarily the goal. I really try to look at things from a holistic perspective of their mental health, their physical health, what is happening in their life, where they're at in their life. Everything of the sort comes into play when I'm making decisions about their protocols as a whole. It really does matter to me that my clients feel confident in what I'm asking them to do. As you can probably tell from my own story, I really care about fostering resilience within my clients because life is going to happen. If you are not confident in your ability to execute this lifestyle change, you are not going to be able to stick with it when things get hard because they freaking will. It's life. And through this, I've really realized that the clients who are passionate about the journey as a whole, they're passionate about making this a permanent change. Those are the clients who are going to actually be able to make that permanent change and live with the results that we're able to achieve for the rest of their life. I have a really strong passion for optimizing the mindset of my clients. We don't try to do things, we do things. We are identifying as the person that we are trying to become before we become that person. By making a commitment to me as their coach, my clients really do start to realize the commitment that they can and should make to themselves. They start to realize what they deserve from themselves and act on that feeling. You deserve to feel like a priority and a coach should instill that confidence in you. Every single bad thing that's happened to me has catalyzed my growth and made me into a better and better person. I really believe in leaning into every single person in your life and learning what you can from that person or that situation. Within learning about fitness and really finding my footing with that, fitness has acted as my stability rather than being the hard thing. It's my my rock in the times of the hard. When you have that stability, it becomes easier and easier to create that reasonable deviation in the name of truly living your life instead of just doing life. And I think that that just connects so much with so many of my own beliefs about fitness and how much it really can enhance things. And it's funny being able to talk through this. There's a lot of things that I've internally thought and struggled with how to put it into words of, hey, this makes things a lot less hard (laughs) when you have these things in place. And it might look different for each and every person. I'm not saying someone has to live life exactly the same way that I do or eat exactly the same way that I do. But it's really about making life a little bit better for yourself. And like you said, not just doing it because you can get so stuck and just 
being and existing. And sometimes you do just need to exist and not to be in the spot where you're doing, doing, doing. But at the same time, you want to be able to enjoy your life. And I have only found the most enjoyment from leaning into those hard times, uh, hard times that I wish were never a hard time in my life and would never dream about them happening to me, but I am so grateful for them because they've allowed me to face something, realize that I can get past it, and I can continue to grow from that, continue to pour into myself, and continue to recognize how truly capable I am. Exactly. Those hard things that come into your life, they're either going to make you or they're going to break you. And if you allow them to be your maker, if you can break past those boundaries and say, I was dealt this really, really hard hand right now, but I'm going to make the most of it and I'm going to have it make me into a better person. That's when you're really able to step into so much power within yourself beyond beyond just fitness, beyond just your work life, your home life, anything. You can step into becoming a whole new person that is capable of so, so, so much. Freaking mic drop. I don't I don't need to even freaking respond to that. But I will tell you that if you are interested in having a boss ass coach like this that is <laughs> going to make sure that you know your full potential and you accomplish what needs to be accomplished, then I will have all of Mia's info in the show notes or the description box so you can inquire to work with Mia. And if you still want to learn a little bit more about Mia, don't you worry. We got you. We freaking got you. The next episode of this podcast, we'll be going over that soft talk a little bit about what it means for how you speak about yourself in the language that you use and what that determines about yourself and what your circumstances are and what your results are and all that jazz. So thank you so much, Mia, for being on the podcast. I'm excited to do another episode with you. And officially, as of today, October 9th, Welcome to the team. Thank you so much, Sue.